Welcome back to another edition of Saint Spotlight. Today we are joined by Holly Jenkins here in the Thomas More community. Thank you so much for joining us here for another edition. Thank you for inviting me, David. Well, first off, could you please share a short history behind your career path and any important turning points? Okay. I'll be 71 years old next month, so I won't go all the way back to when the career started, okay? But I have... Um, I've done so many different things. I've been really blessed to not just be on one career path. I have, you know, been a business owner, secretary. I have been um, just all, you know, stay-at-home mom. I've, you know, and 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 the industries that I've worked in is just as varied. I I tend to, I would say, get bored easily. Or once I've learned something, I want to learn something new, and I'll go into a new career. But the latest has been about the last 15 years, I've been an executive um, corporate coach, and I do individual coaching as well. And that is has been a passion more so than just a career. And I'm blessed that it is, you know, lucrative enough that, you know, my company, Restart Your Life, is what I named it because there's so many times that in our lives that we do have to restart. You know, like when people go off to college, they restart. In a marriage, they restart, you know, birth of children, you know, children go off to college, there's, you know, death of a spouse or death of a parent. We're always restarting our lives in some way, and I wanted to be able to help guide people through some of that. You have been a CEO at Restart Your Life for over 15 years. Can you share some of your memories and accomplishments over that time? Um, some of my, I think the biggest accomplishment for me was I've always read. But in order to help people with different, you know, areas of their life, I had to really become educated in so many different, you know, uh, genres of, mu of not music, but, you know, uh, reading and, and then really internalizing and being able to support someone else going through something that maybe I haven't gone through myself. How do I do that? I had to learn those things. And so that was uh, a lot of the journey, and it continues all the time. You, you never stop being able to learn. And um, one of my, to me, a big accomplishment was when I read um, Don Miguel Ruiz's book, The Four Agreements. Once I read that book, incorporating them into my life, because it's one thing to read something. It's something else to even to understand it, but to actually put it in practice in your life, like on a daily basis, and this is who you are, this is what you stand for, and um, I've been able to do that, and I think that was a huge accomplishment for me, to just be able to, like, you know, the, uh, the fourth agreement, which we'll probably talk about a little bit more later, is uh, always do your best, and what that looks like. I mean, you got to be on 10 all the time with whatever you do. And for me, that is my greatest accomplishment, whether it's being a parent on 10, whether it's being a student on 10, whether it's being a friend on 10. I'm who I am all the time. I don't waver. I'm not moody like one day I'm here and the next day I'm down there. That's not, that doesn't, being your best doesn't allow for that. Well, as a student, how has your experience been at Thomas More? This has been one of the greatest experiences of my life. I love school, first of all. And when I was looking for a school to continue my education, I went to UC back in the 70s, okay? And so when I wanted to pick back up, I was looking for a school. Of course, I went to UC first and, you know, was looking at their programs and, you know, talking to people. and. Uh, to be honest with you, two things brought me here. The first one was UC wouldn't accept their own old credits. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I needed a jump start, right? And then, you know, when UC was ruled out, I started reading about the different schools. And one line in um, uh, Thomas More's um, mission statement, I would say, they, if they talk about integrity, that it's just a school that they live by it, they teach it, all of that. And I'm like, that's where I want to go. That is where I want to go. So I um, called, made an appointment, and five years later, here I am working on my master's. So. Yes, it's, it's, it's been a, an honor to be a, a classmate of yours over the 
over these months as well in that same program of, of ethical leadership. Uh -huh. What have been uh, some of your favorite parts of that class so far or the program? All of it. <laughs> I mean, absolutely all of it. I love the research. I love the videos. And I know that, you know, no disrespect to anybody. Sometimes when I read posts or see things, I'm like, did they read the same thing that I read? Or did they see, have the same question that I had because it's not matching? So sometimes I ask, ask the professor, did I get something wrong here? But I watch the videos. I read the book. I actually read my textbooks. You know, and I know a lot of students don't. They skim and find what they need. And as far as you know, uh, you know, advice to students, I am and have already developed a curriculum that I'm going to present somewhere to see if I can teach. Um, and the name of it is, do you want a degree or do you want an education? And that's my future plans. I want to teach that class do you want an education, I mean a degree, or do you want an education? Because sometimes they don't go hand in hand. Because I know a lot of college graduates who do not have an education. <laughs> they, they don't. And it's not the school. The school is the school. It's the curriculum is the curriculum. So do you want to learn that and get yourself an education, or are you just getting through here to get your degree? Because the degree doesn't get you the job. The degree may get you the interview for the job, but your education, what you're bringing to the company, this piece of paper you can't say here, you gotta bring something, you gotta bring some of yourself or something within yourself to get and keep a job and, and, and create a career. It's not about just getting a piece of paper. It's like a lifelong education, it's something that you know, I, this is a quick little story, by being an online student, you know, I don't participate in any of the groups on campus or anything like that. So when I graduated last year with my bachelor's, I decided to go on the senior boat ride. I'm going to do something with my class, right? I get on this boat, and all these 20-somethings are jumping up and down. I'm like, Wally, what are you doing here? You know, I'm like 70 years old, right, on this boat ride with these kids. And I said, oh, that's why I don't do things on campus. But they were so lovely and so gracious, and we had they made sure I had a good time. It was great. It really was. But it was like, what the heck? <laughs> so, But that is what I see in my future is trying to— because the graduation rates at universities and colleges is dismal. Here, even at uh, Thomas More, is less than 50%. So 50% of the so uh, freshmen coming in don't get a degree or, or an education. You see what I'm saying? So if we can do something up front, maybe that summer before they start into school, getting them to understand, doing some personal development. Because you're 17, 18 years old, what do you know? Not much. And if we can start getting their mindset that they want an education, you know, because people ask, what are you studying, don't they? They don't say, what are you learning? They said, what are you studying? Oh, I'm studying, you know, math. I'm studying psychology. I'm studying this. But what are you learning? And it's different. And that's the class that I want to teach It's getting them ready to get an education. If there was a student out there listening who is on this current track of on a degree but not education, what advice would you have to share with them to get on the right track of seeking out the the bigger purpose behind a degree, which is an education? Mm -hmm. First of all, think about the, the money that you're wasting. Your mom's money, your dad's money, somebody's money you're wasting. And even if you got student loans, you're wasting your own money because you got to pay that back. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think a lot of students resent student loans so much because they didn't do what they needed to do with it. That's a lot of money for someone to loan you and you, you know, misuse it, 
And then you're mad because you got to pay it back because you can't get the job because you didn't get the education. That's not the loan. And I hope that they do pass that forgiveness bill. Don't get me wrong. But I think that we have to take some ownership and some responsibility of what we get for that money. Mm-hmm. You know? So, um, but if someone's listening, okay, after you think about the money that's being wasted, think about the time that you're wasting, the energy that you're wasting, not just your time, but your professor's time. You're wasting a lot of energy for nothing if you don't get an education. So just think about what it is that you want in life. What do you want your life to look like when you're 30? What do you want your life to look like in your 40s? And I'm not talking about just the houses and the cars and the family. I'm talking about what do you want internally? What do you, who do you want to be? Not what do you want to be, but who do you want to be? Education teaches you that. A a degree doesn't. It teaches you what? I'm going to be a doctor, or I'm going to be, you know, a school teacher. I'm going to be this. But who are you going to be? Two different questions. Two different, very, two very different results. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, you've, you've certainly given a lot to think about and also a lot of good wisdom. Thank you very much for sharing it with us. Oh, no problem. And thank you all back home for watching another edition of Saint Spotlight. Uh, make sure to tune in for our next edition. And as always, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.